Hello everyone, it's Phil here. Welcome to another Tweet Guide video. This time we're looking at Strike Commander from GOG. Lots of stuff I'm going to cover in this video. We're going to tweak the graphics, the sound, have some general MIDI going. We're going to look at the joystick, get the hat going and also mapping the buttons to have a rudder. And at the end I'm just going to show you how you can play this game on an original vintage retro gaming PC. Okay, so let's get started. What we do after you've installed the game, go to your GOG uh, game folder, which is here, and find your game, Strike Commander, and a couple of files we need to work with. We need to open this file here, DOSBox, Strike Commander, config. Let's make it nice and big so we can see what's going on. So we're gonna start with tweaking the graphics. I'm just gonna show you a quick clip of what it should not look like, and then at the end of what it should look like, and then I'll show you how to tweak it. So what we need to do, um, full screen resolution, it's set to desktop, that's actually fine. However, I do prefer setting my native resolution and typing in the uh, numbers. Window resolution, set that to 800 by 600. That is the resolution it uses if you toggle between full screen and window mode by pressing Alt Enter. Output, change that to OpenGL or direct draw, depending on what runs better on your machine. OpenGL has a slightly uh, more consistent look and fonts are easier to read, whereas direct draw is a bit harsher, more sharp, uh, but sometimes the text looks a bit funny. The other thing we need to change is the aspect ratio, set that to true, and scalar to normal 3x. With the processor, there's actually nothing we have to tweak. They've done a good job. They set it to a fixed cycle speed of 25,000. There is an issue with this game on machines that are too fast. Um, certain rockets, the enemy planes will be a lot very fast at um, using countermeasures and basically they are unbeatable. So I think they might have changed that because of listening through some forums, uh, forum entries. For the sound, mixer rate. 22,000, that's way too low. We're gonna boost that to a sample rate of 48,000 and we do the same thing for the Sound Blaster so we have some clearer speech going on in this game. The other thing we're gonna do is change the music. By default, it uses the FM music and we're gonna change that, change that to general MIDI. I've got a little clip here comparing what FM sounds like to general MIDI. <laughs> Okay, so in order to get general MIDI going, you need a virtual MIDI device. I'm using virtual MIDI synth. I've used uh, base MIDI before, but for some reason it decided not to start anymore on my machine. Maybe a Windows update killed it, I don't know. So I'm back to using CoolSoft virtual MIDI synth. You also need a sound font. So I've loaded a sound font here and that's all ready to go. The other thing you need to do is figure out what device ID um, the MIDI synth has. So we're just going to open a blank DOS box and we type in mixer slash list MIDI. There we go. So the device ID for the CoolSoft Virtual MIDI synth is zero. And we need that number and plug it into here. MIDI config zero. Okay, there's more to do. I'm just going to save this. By default, the game is configured for FM sound, so we need to change that. And there's a program here to do that. It's called install. The problem is uh, there's no shortcut for us to do that. So we need to do this ourselves. So we're gonna copy paste this configuration file. And we're gonna rename it to install. And let's just open it up. And instead of opening, launching the game, we're gonna launch install. 
And then we're also going to copy paste the shortcut. And we right click on the shortcut, go properties. And instead of launching the single conf, we change that to our install. And press OK. And now we run it. And now we can change some sound options. So we go change the hardware configuration. We're going to go for the music. We're going to go with general MIDI. And for the sound effects, we're going to go with Sound Blaster 220. For the address, interrupt, set that to 5. MIDI address to 330. We've got a local bus, a very fast video card. Yes and yes. And we are done. So the last tweak we need to do has to do with the joystick. It's down here. Time falls, that all looks fine. The only thing we have to change is the joystick type. Um, the game supported the Thrustmaster control system, what's it called, FCS Thrustmaster control system, a flight control system and weapon weapons control system. I'll put in a picture of what it looks like. And in order to get the hat and the rudder going, we need to change this to FCS, which simulates the Thrustmaster. And that's really it. So I'm going to save, cross it off, cross it off. And I'm going to launch the game now and show you how to uh, configure your joystick. The joystick I'm using, by the way, is the Thrustmaster M16000, I believe, yep. So we're just gonna do a training mission. Okay, here we are. So at this point in time, the joystick doesn't work yet. So you have to press Alt-O. And I highly recommend you print out the quick quick chart that has all the buttons. Um, it's on, I think, two pages and it shows you what all the buttons are. Um, you can download that from the GOG download section. So we need to go to, I think it's under, no, it's not gameplay, it's under flight. And here we change the flight control to uh, Thrustmaster and also the panning control also to Thrustmaster. And then we go exit, we press save and exit and we should now have the uh, joystick. That just takes a moment to, there you go, joystick is working and if I move the hat, I can now look around. So the uh, Thrustmaster, Thrustmaster flight control system had a trigger at the front and three buttons at the top and these are just all mapped to some of the other keys. Yeah. But the router doesn't do anything yet, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you need to do is press Control F1 to open the mapper, and I'm just going to mute the music because it gets it, it's got a stuck note otherwise. So here you can map keys to certain buttons. So I'm going to map the landing that's L oh, um, toggles the landing gear. So I'm going to go Add. I'm going to use let's go for this button here. And I'm also gonna change plus uh, the speed, so plus and minus. So let's go click on plus, add. I'm gonna use that key, and for minus, I'm gonna use another button. So the Thrustmaster M16000 has a lot of buttons, so very convenient. And now we gotta configure the rudder. So it has two buttons here. The comma and the dot, that one is for rudder left, rudder right. So we click on that one, add, and now just twist the joystick to the left and do the same thing with the rudder going to the right. Add, twist the joystick to the right. Make sure you hit save. And I'm gonna unmute my sound. Exit, and we should be back in the game. And if I twist my joystick now, I've got I've got a working rudder. It is digital, so it's not as good as having um, pedals, but it's better than nothing. Let's try the, let me just get my view going here, my landing gear. So if I press that button, the joystick, I've got my landing gear, and I can also change my speed. So I don't think there's an indicator, but you should be able to hear the, 
I hear the engine noise. So I'm just gonna put this speed up again. Okay, now the only thing I need to show you is how can you play Strike Commander on a original retro gaming PC? Um, what type of computer do I recommend? Something around a 486DX2 with 66 megahertz. So what you need to do is go to the game folder where your game is and follow, we're just gonna follow the trail. So if we click here, it mounts the following file, sc.dat. So we're gonna look for that file. There it is. Look at that, it's quite big, almost 200 megabyte, and that actually is an ISO image. So we can copy paste that, rename it, and just call it sc.iso. And what you then do is just need to burn it. So of course, let's just go with any burn. Put in a blank CD, click on burn image, locate the image file, which is now gg.game, strike commander, sciso, and burn it. And that's a full installation disk, put it in your retro computer, run install, it copies all the files over. Um, it's basically a copy of the original installation disk. Okay, that's it, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Any comments, leave them down below. Um, hit that like button if you haven't subscribed. Please do so, and looking forward to my next video.